For what? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one was that? This one. Shut up. The human soul is contained in the nerves of the body, but about their physical nature, as a layman, I cannot say more than that they are extraordinarily delicate structures, comparable to the finest filaments, and that the total mental life of human being rests on their excitability by external impressions. Vibrations are thereby caused in the nerves, which produce the sensation of pleasure and pain in a manner which cannot be further explained. They are able to retain the memory of impressions received, the human memory, and have also the power of moving, moving the muscles of the body which they inhabit into any manifest activity by exertion of their willpower. The picture I contain of the nature of God and the continued existence of the human soul after death differs markedly in some respect from the Christian view of this matter. It seems to me that a comparison between the two can only favor the former. God is not omniscient and omnipresent in the sense of that he continuously sees inside every individual, living person, perceives every feeling of their nerves. That is, so, that, it's, uh, that is to say that all the time he tries their hearts and brains. But there is no need for this because after death the nerves of human beings will all the impressions they have received during life lay bare before God's eyes. So that unfaintly just judgment could be reached. In any case, it's always possible for God to get know the inner person through nerve contact whenever the need arises. The picture I have experienced is, however, lax and in, of the future of the severity, of the purposeless cruelty and primitive of some of the notion of the Christian or the religion. The whole order of the world therefore appears as a miraculous structure, the sublime that surpasses in my opinion, all conceptions which, in the course of history, man and people have developed about their relation to God. Over time, as the contact established with my nerves became more concrete, the more miracles were directed against me. In the meantime, my doctor had found a way of raising himself up to heaven, either with the wall or with part of his soul and so made himself manipulator of rays without prior death and without undergoing the process of purification. In this way a plot was laid against me, the purpose of which was to hand me over to another human being after my nervous illness had been assumed to be incurable. In this way my soul was handed to him and my body was transformed into a female body. Misconstruing the order of the world, my body was then left to another human being for sexual misuse and simply forsaken. In other words, my body was left to rot. It is hard to be exactly clear as to what was happened to such a forsaken human being, nor whether, wh whether this actually meant that. On the other hand, there was a time when soul in nerve contact with me talked of a plurality of heads, that is several individ individuals on one and the same school, which they encountered in me and from, which they shrank in alarm crying, for heaven's sake that is a human being with several heads. All of candor, the extrary symptoms and my illness are praying in my body in the course of the time, especially in the rapid change in my sex organ, most nearly in the conscience with the order of the world, with this memory called that when someone connected with the pressure of the human carry off of my inner body. To them below especially the various changes my sex organ. Several times, particularly in the bed, they were marked indication of an actual retraction of the male organ. Frequently, however, particularly when main impure rains 
were involved, they removed by miracles of a single hairs from my beard, and in particular my moustache. These are the nature of the soul, and therefore we talk it begins, they were discussing according to their place of original as Aryan and Catholic scorpions. The former were somewhat bigger and stronger. However, the scorpion regularly withdraw from my head without doing me harm. When they perceived the purity of the nervous and the holiness of my purpose, this was on the innumerable trams which I have often experienced size than a similar way. In discussing then I must return again to the idea of the end of the world. I have no doubt in any way that my early ideas were ever delusions and hallucinations. Because even now I still receive impressions daily and hourly and know they are real. These reinforced visions make it perfectly clear to me that, in Hamlet's words, there is something rotten in the state of Denmark. That is to say, there is something rotten in the relationship between God and mankind. But how the present state of things developed historically, whether uh, by sudden changes or gradual transition, and to what extent, apart from the manifestations of life, caused by the influence of rays, miracles, manifestations of life occur independently and uninfluenced by the rays, remains even for me an obscure point. I want to add something about births created by miracles. It is clear that the individual nerve or soul that are in them appear in the shape of different kinds of birds according to the season of the year. The same nerves and in the spring contain in the bodies of finches or other singing birds, in the summer in the bodies of swallow, in the winter in the body of sparrows and crows. I have no doubt about the identity of soul concerned because I know the tone of their voices well and I, I recognize all the phrases I regularly hear from them. This naturally leads to the question whether they can possibly have continual life or whether they have to be created a new miracles every day or perhaps even longer individuals of, the ta of time. I can only raise but un not answer the question. I observe that the miraculous create birds feed and empty themselves in the manner of natural birds. I will therefore be possible that mir miraculously uh, create a state and uh, maintain it for time by uh, taking in uh, nourishment. I have also repeatedly observed them building nests in the spring which appears to point to, to some power of uh, reproduction. The changes in my whole life during the past years and the form of battle and annihilation assume that what kind of divine race are led against me. I will now add some more about the form also a vastly change of con uh, constant need to compulsive thinking. Compulsive thinking has been defined before as having to think continuously. This contradiction meant natural rights or mental relaxation of temporary rest from mental activity to thinking nothing, or as the expression goes in, uh, in the basic language. It disturbs the basis of human being. The purpose of not finishing a sentence is consistent with God's attitude to me throughout, to prevent the solution in my body that would necessarily result from its attraction. Why conditions prevailed which were at least somehow in consonance with the false order of the world. Many momentary uniform feelings are enough to make the freely suspended souls jump down from the sky into my mouth, who's ending their independent existence. This is an even I actually experienced repeatedly. But mere intellectual had the same effect. 
whenever the race would be led to me and entering my temporarily increases my body souls, not finishing has apparently effect the eyes have. In order I held up, could therefore withdraw before voluptuousness, but the attraction to my body completely slows it down. Voluptuous enjoyment or blessedness is granted to soul in perpetuity and as an end in itself, but to human beings and other living creatures solely as a means for the preservation of the species. Herein lie the moral limitation of voluptuous, voluptuousness for human beings. An excess of voluptuousness would re render man unfit to fulfill his other obligation, and it would prevent him from ever rising to either mental and moral perfection. From what I experience of the restorative power of divine rays on my body, I believe that ordinary illness, even external violence, cannot possibly cause my death. If, for instance, I were to fall into water or wish to put a bullet through my head or chest, ideas I, of course, no longer harbor, I would expect temporary scenes corresponding to those of death by drawing or unconsciousness follow, following a bullet, wood which would be fatal in other people. Labor my of success they overwatched. Someday with stars favorable sense, these in that hope they in now stop I so and mankind to blessing uh, as come only could that after all live south the end exist God a living that Knowledge certain absolutely the revised be to have good truth as accepted hinder to dogmas Christian particularly many if heaven. The human soul is confounded in terms of the body, but above their physical nature, I cannot say more than that they are extraordinary, they are constructed, comparable to the finest filaments, and that the total mental life of a human being rests on their excitability by external vibration. Vibration of the Abdurabai goes to the current, which produces a sensation of pleasure and pain in a manner which is not further explained. They are able to retain the memory of impression received in human memory, and have also the power of moving the muscles the body which they have into any manifestation of activity by exaltation of the whole power. The most tender beginnings, the through the wall of the child's soul, they develop to a complex system which embraces the most desperate regions of human knowledge and the soul of natural man. Part of the nerves is adapted solely for receiving sensory impressions, nerve sight, hearing, taste, consciousness, etc. Others are therefore only capable of the sensation of light, sound, and then cool. Of the feeling of anger, voluptuousness and pain, and skill out of nerves, the nerves of intellect, receive and retain mental impressions. 